I've had a lot of inquiries, uh, and, and so many people have asked questions about, you know, since we've located this cemetery in these graves, why are these Weaver people up here on this hill in the Williams Cemetery? I, I can't explain it, but I have a theory, and I'm going to share that with you, and I'm going to try to get to it as briefly as possible. But there, there are several mysteries and commodities involved in quite a few things uh, surrounding this. But first, let's look at the grave. The grave over here, this is Henry Weaver. Now, Henry was born in 18 February, 1821, died 3rd of April, 1893. And he's the Confederate soldier that we're here to pay tribute to. Right beside him is Mary Hoover, uh, the Boer Weaver, and Mary, I haven't really determined exactly what her family line is yet. I know that there's a lot of us that looked at it. I know that I have looked at the family several times, but I just cannot determine that one. But I'm sure it's going to come forward. But another thing that uh, is sort of a, an odd thing, and it certainly says on her headstone there, that she was born in 1834, died 1912. I don't think that the 1834 is going to hold up. I think it's probably an engraver's mistake, which is not the first that we've run into this kind of thing. Because the census records and everything that several of us here has, has looked at shows that she was born in 1824. And if the 34 was right, she would have given birth to her first child at 10 years old. I don't think it's going to hold up. Anyway, uh, that's what the stone says, and it's a little bit in dispute, okay? And then uh, the next stone over is William R. Weaver. William was one of the sons of Henry and Mary, and uh, he was born in 1843, died in 1901, and he was the oldest of the eight children that they had. And then the next stone, and I think that this is it right here, it says M.C. Weaver on it, and that is Mary Catherine Weaver. And she was the wife of William, okay, and the daughter-in-law of them. Now, here we go. Mary Catherine, her maiden name was Pat, okay, and in between being a Patton and a Weaver, she was also a bowling by a prior marriage. We're not even going to go there today. That's a different day. <laughs> but hang on to that Patton name because we're going to come back to that just in a few minutes. Uh, Henry, our soldier, he was the third of eight children that was born to Peter Weaver and Mary Stoop. To date, we haven't been able to find their graves. We don't know where they are. You could be sitting on them. We don't know. Well, they could be anywhere in East Tennessee or the surrounding area. Haven't been able to find them. Anyway, Henry's grandparents and the parents of Peter was Frederick Weaver and Catherine Peter. Now, when I tell you who they are, if you don't already know, you're, you're going to be very familiar with them. And we know where they're buried. There's a, a nice monument to them out in the Beeler Cemetery on Weaver Pike. Everybody know where Weaver Pike is in Bristol? Anybody? You know where the Weaver community is? Okay. Before Frederick, we can only confirm that he was a Lutheran, of German descent, that's what we're saying. And the Weaver name, probably Weber, before it became Weaver. Okay, and that was before it was what they should call Anglicized. <laughs> anyway, Frederick Weaver, grandparent, and now I'm going to tie all this together for you. He was a Revolutionary War soldier and one of the over 850 over mountain men that went from Sycamore Shoals, which is right down the road in this direction somewhere, across the mountain to Kings Mountain fight with the British, okay? And it was 
300 or 231 years ago this weekend. In fact, they're doing the reenactment of that this weekend. And from Sycamore Shoals, they're actually marching over there. And that battle at Kings Mountain, now that was a very pivotal battle in deciding the independence of our country, much so as the northern battles that they had in the Revolutionary War. And also, to say a little bit more about Frederick, uh, according to the tax records and deeds, uh, he massed nearly 700 acres of land in the late 1700s and was a fairly wealthy man. And if that money has been passed down to the family, it must have went to some of you. I did not get it. <laughs> I don't know. But anyway, if you're familiar with that Weaver community out there on Weaver Pike, you know where the Weaver Church, the Weaver School, the Weaver Cemetery, all of that is out there? All of that was on his land. Okay? Across the road, the big house over there, that was the Weaver plantation house or the cabin, whichever you want to call it. It's the old two-story log structure there that's been redone. And then there on the road also was a store that was originally, I think, a Weaver store, then became a Raider store, grocery. And now I think there's a little restaurant in there or something like that. But all of that land out in there was uh, part of the Weaver uh, land. Now, I think that house, if I'm not mistaken, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, was either bought by or passed to Peter, because Peter, his father, lived in the house. Okay? So if that's true, then Henry probably spent a lot of his <coughs> younger years in that house that we're talking about. <coughs> now, remember I told you to hang on to that name of Patton, and we're going to come back to that. I'm going to try to tie this together for you. In the Patton Simmons Cemetery over near Milligan College, there is a good sized stone there with an inscription on it, a sort of a monument to Mary Patton. And she was the wife of John Patton. Now, on the monument or the headstone is an inscription that reads this it says, Mary Patton, 1751 1836 one of that heroic band that established a civilization in the wilderness. She made the powder, I get this, she made the powder used by John Sevier's troops in the Revolutionary War Battle of Kings Mountain. All right? She hated Major Ferguson. He was a British commander at Kings Mountain. And because of the border dispute, because they said they couldn't settle west of the Appalachian Mountains, and she was going to show him as many did. And so she got into the business of making gunpowder. And this gunpowder was crucial not only in the Revolutionary War, but also in the war between the states for this area. So anyway, she made this gunpowder solely for a dollar a pound and used the money to buy more land here to irritate this major Ferguson and the British. But anyway... Here we go. The daughter of the Pattons married John Williams. Harriet, which daughter was that? Joanna. And it appears that the families married into each other had the same goals of acquiring these large tracts of land. And they had the <laughs> wars in common and the gunpowder in common. And we're going to hear that Henry was actually, actually in the later years involved in the mining and manufacturing of this gunpowder. And uh, this is pure speculation, but that's my theory of how these families probably came together. It's sort of a triangular thing, the Weaver, the Patton, the William. And I can't hard fact prove that, but it makes sense to me. And that's my story, and I'm going to go with it. <laughs> but anyway, getting back to Henry, if you look at the census records, Henry and Mary moved around quite a bit. It appears that uh, he, he, he was a farmer during much of those years, anyway, and had modest wealth. And of their ten children, the birthplaces are in Sullivan County, Lee County, Virginia, 
back to Sullivan County, and then in Carter County. So they were moving around some, okay? And then another odd thing about the Weaver Grave, and you guys pay attention to this because we're going to get called on this, okay? All the headstones on here have the inscriptions facing out away from the graves instead of over the graves. I've never seen them set like that, and I don't know why they're like that. It's just, it's, to me, it seems odd. I've never seen them like that. But anyway, uh, there are specifications for where you place this iron cross on the grave. <coughs> and when the pictures come out, and they're standing here taking these pictures, they're going to say, he messed up and he put it on the wrong side of the grave. It's on the right side. They're turning around. <laughs> but anyway, it's it. And then, um, there's, there's not much more biography that I can tell you about, Henry. On the inside of your uh, program, uh, I printed as much as I could get in there so you can uh, take that with you and, and uh, certainly look at that, okay? And this time I'd like to have the man that's going to do the uh, dedication of the cross plate. Anyone, if you give him room. Military summary of Henry Weaver. As the war between the states dragged on, East Tennessee and the surrounding area became increasingly crucial in supplying vital key ingredients needed for manufacturing gunpowder and other raw materials, metals, and minerals to sustain the war effort. It made this area a prime military objective for both the Union and the Confederacy. On June 16, 1863, the first Confederate, uh, Confederate Congress passed an act authorizing the creation of a formal uh, nighter and mining bureau as an independent office within the Confederate War Department. This formalization and expansion uh, in turn required a need for defense and security for these operations. In 1864, under the Niner and Mining Board, a military unit was formed in Southern County, Tennessee. For detailed conscripts in mining and manufacturing of raw materials for the defense of these operations. At this time, Henry Weaver, along with others from the area, answered the call to duty in the Confederate States Army in the defense of his homeland and his family. He was assigned to detailed conscripts uh, at Mining Bureau District 7, Company A. He entered as a private and remained so until the end of the war in April 1865. If there is a picture of my great-great-grandfather, Henry Weaver, I am not aware of such. However, from the muster roll of this war rec his war records, we are given a brief description of his appearance as being 48 years old at the, at the time. Fair complexion, blue eyes, dark hair. In, in my mind, he projects a handsome image of a man willing to give the final full measure the call that he believed in. I know I would have been as proud of him then as I am today, and it gives me great honor to present this Confederate Cross of Honor that Henry Weaver so richly deserves. My great great uncle, Henry Weaver, departed this earth on April 3rd, 1893. Of course, I didn't know him, but I'm certainly looking forward to meeting him one great day in heaven. We have met here today to honor the memory of this husband, father, and soldier. His worldly deeds are complete, and the march of this soldier is over. Let us pay tribute today under the same blue skies of heaven that in life watched over him as he displayed his courage on the battlefields in defense of our homelands. May we, as we stand here by his grave, remember that it is our duty to honor all men like Henry Weaver, who stood shoulder to shoulder on the fields of battle and served so faithfully to preserve our sacred rights and our heritage. And as we remember Henry Weaver, 
Let us cherish the example as a defender of those principles he believed in to be right. To me, it is so sad that this man has had to wait more than a century for this deserved ceremony of honor, but I'm sure God has rewarded Henry Weaver for his deeds of valor. Now, on behalf of our family descendants and all the cherished friends, we dedicate this Confederate Cross of Honor as a crown over the remains of Henry Weaver in this hallowed resting place. Flags as a competitor have come under so much scrutiny of the uninformed people and stereotype them with various corrupt, racist organizations. An informed person is well aware of these flags represent a prominent part of our southern heritage, not hate. <coughs> Henry Weaver fought for his southern home homeland and his deep convictions while following these flags for some of the most treacherous times during the War of Depression. It is difficult to imagine the horrible day-to-day -day circumstances that he and others like him had to endure. I would like to place this third national Confederate flag, which was the last flag Henry Weaver served on, as a salute to his heroic effort and to the proud heritage he has passed to us. 